everyone. We're back with our panel. Uh, this is our panel show. We're going to do these at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern every day. It's it's a good thing because at the end of it, I get to go to bed and uh, you get the more clinics in America while I catch up on some Z's before work this week. So it's all pretty good. I have a great panel for our first panel as well. Um, so in no particular order other than the order they're appearing on my screen, because that's how it works. Uh, we have Neil Erickson all the way from Hawaii. Hi, Neil. And we have... Hello, and, uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah, give us a wave when I say your name so people know who you are. You you like your names are like titchy tiny on their screens now. Unless you've got like one of these sixty five inch TVs, which like scares the heck out of the cat when something comes out of the Moffitt tunnel while you're watching the Devon Rio Grande videos. I don't know. Anyway, then we've got Perry Lamb, uh, from the Piedmont Division in Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks for joining us, Perry. Yeah, uh, sir. Then we've got Lloyd. Uh, who has been on and gave a clinic on his first layout, which I think everybody was like, oh, so that's cool, because that's the topic of tonight. And then we have, uh, last but very not least, we have Mike Mackey, MMR, uh, from the Lone Star region down in Texas, Division 1, Cowcatcher Division. Mike's the one that scoops everybody up and gets them into the NMRA. That's that's the whole Cowcatcher Division. <laughs> thing. Um, so... A great panel. So how this is going to work, I know we've we've not really done this before, but the topic for tonight, oh, we've got the dog. Awesome. My dog's asleep. All right. Jasmine's helping out here, but I'm trying to keep her quiet. That's all right. Don't worry. That's fine. Don't worry. Shadow and Shadow and Steffi will be probably saying hello at some point this week, So, um, which is Perry's dogs. So we're, uh, we're all family friendly here. So <clears throat> the topic for tonight is building your first model railroad. I've got three pre-prepared questions that I'm going to put to the panel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Facebook group. I'm going to share my Facebook feed, which I apologize for anything that may pop up in there from chats from people that know me and know that my screen is being shared. I apologize in advance, um, but we'll see that. You might, you'll even get to see the NMRA Facebook group from the admin side of things because my admin panels are open and I can't turn them off. Um, but we'll have a look at the post that we put on this morning and there was a few comments on that. And then we'll go over to the YouTube and we'll pick up some chats, uh, some questions from the YouTube chats to ask to the panel. So. Post your questions in there as we go, and I'll pick them up at the end with whatever time's remaining before we go over to, I think it's Ralph Renzetti for a weathering clinic. So uh, let's go. Standard standard practice, okay? I know you're not all MMRs, but the MMRs can do this. So I want you to put your hand up if you want to answer the question, okay? Uh, but we'll go for the first question in the same order that I just introduced you all. Um Okay, so question one that we've got in our pre-prepared questions is uh, tell us about your first model railroad layout, not something that was chasing stuff around the floor or around the Christmas tree. Okay, your first model railroad layout, which had scenery and, and stuff like that. Just tell us a bit about it. Neil. I remember the round rebound. I think it was American Flyer when I was about three years old, but when I was uh, about nine years old, I bought a train set with some paper out money and I had a five by nine table and tried working up a cookie cutter method. And I think it was out of uh, one of the 101, you know, uh, layouts you can build from uh, Atlas, but I expanded on it because I thought four by eight was too small. So HO scale over and under and a lot of lessons learned there, you know, uh, grades over and under how much clearance you need for your, your uh, cars to get. And so it's very uh, educational and ended up sitting in the basement and growing for years before it became a chainsaw and I moved up to my own bedroom. That's cool. We'll talk more about chainsaw layouts. We shall introduce that term, I have no doubt. Uh, Perry, what was your first layout? My first layout was actually a switching layout. I was modeling um, Northern California. Um, the Bearskin Meadow in Grants Grove was a fictional railroad, and I had just gotten into scenery when my parents decided it was time to move, but it was an L-shaped layout about 14 feet long, built of all places in the garage. Ugh. But uh, I had fun with that. I learned, I, I got a, a little bit of a start on scenery and track work, and um, my current railroad is nothing like it. But it was HO scale standard gauge. 
That's cool. Oh, I've seen your, you have seen your layout. So yeah, I can imagine that was not your first layout. No. Uh, but somebody who is, I think, still working on his first layout, maybe not, is Lloyd. Yes. Uh, to be honest, it's not my first layout. Uh, my well, my first layout lasted maybe four months, three, four months. Um, I thought that I was able to reach 36 inches one side, 36 inches on the other side. So that's 72 inches. So why not build a 72 inch wide layout? And that didn't work out. Uh, so somebody contacted me and wanted to give me a hand. So he designed the layout that I'm working on. So my first layout, um, I was told, um, Oh, what is it? Um, bigger is not necessarily better. So being a planner, uh, I decided to go big. So I've got a, my first layout is a 40 feet by 20 feet layout. And I've encountered a lot of problems and I'm glad that I joined a lot of groups and I was helped by a lot of people. So yes, uh, I still, I'm hoping to Get it finished in five years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, somebody chalk that down, <laughs> and we'll It'll check in. Well, it's, it's, it's on tape, Gordy. It'll be there for posterity. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was very brave of you, boy. That was very brave. All right, cool. And um, Mike. Well. Um, I didn't have nearly as an auspicious start as Perry or Neil. Uh, started in this hobby when I, I mean, obviously got a train set as a kid, and it was a Marks set, three rail, uh, O scale, O gauge, O27 kind of thing uh, from Sears and Roebuck. Uh, but when I first started building a layout, I um, commandeered the ping pong table that the family was not using that was in the garage and decided that I was going to put terrain on it and took a jigsaw and started cutting and doing all kinds of crazy things. And it was absolutely a disaster. Um, amidst all that, I was weathering uh, locomotives and I decided that I wanted to put soot on the top of a locomotive. And whenever I did, I used a candle and uh, decided that soot from a candle was gonna be the way to do it. But unfortunately the heat from the candle, warped the radiators and on top of the locomotives. And I quickly found out that I was not nearly as skilled as I thought I was at what I was doing. Uh, fast forward, that was the only layout that I ever really had until I was 61 years old. And two years ago, well, I take it back, 60 years old. I'd been a member of several clubs, but didn't have my own layout. Uh, I had the opportunity when we moved into a, a, a house to take over the bumpus room, the media room. My wife said, you can build your layout here. And I said, wonderful. And I built a 15 by 19 layout. Um, it was H -O, uh, HON3. It was on the SN3 symposium tour here in Dallas-Fort Worth uh, about three years ago. And whenever it was uh, about four months after it was on the tour and it was about 90% complete, my wife says, you know what? We're gonna move to a different house. <laughs> yeah, Neil and Perry and Lloyd are all laughing now because you know where this is going. And uh, we moved into another house. She said, you're gonna get to have another room for your layout. So uh, she wanted a single story uh, house uh, we ended up buying a two-story house. I got the entire upstairs of another bumpus room, and I, my layout room went from 15 by 19 to 19 by 39. So I, I upgraded in the deal. I'm, I'm happy with it, and um, I've got some pictures of the other layout, if time permits. Gordon, you want to see a couple of things on the, the old layout that is no longer, and then uh, uh, the other layout that's here in the room where I am serves as my office and my, my train room. So I, I'm very fortunate I get to go to go to my office and work in my train room every day. So we, we might come back to that. If not, you can post them in the Facebook uh, group under the post. For not the a problem. It's messy because it's under construction, but uh, I've got 
I've got three other MMRs that are helping me build it and we're making fast and rapid progress on it. So it will be, uh, it will be uh, in, in great order by the time the 2023 convention rolls around. Trust me. That's cool. good. That's good. Hey, Gordy, by the way, by the way, I am sporting my brand new NMRA X shirt that I got from Daylight Sales last week. Absolutely so. awesome. Yeah, and everyone can go there, daylightsales.net, and uh, support us um, and uh, get yourself a, a t shirt or a polo or something, and it'll, uh, it'll come, uh, some proceeds will come back to the project and uh, help us possibly repair the server that uh, Chernobyl on us this morning. Uh, I, 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 my, mine are on the way. Um, they're somewhere in San Francisco in the USPS hub. So uh, who knows when they will arrive in the, in the distance North Atlantic, but they will be uh, flying across it soon. Hopefully. They, okay. they will personalize them for you if you want them to also. So just to let you know. Very good. Good plug. Okay, back to topic. So um, the second question is, what piece of advice would you give somebody who is just joining or rejoining the hobby and thinking about building a layout for the first time, or the first time in a long time. Who wants to go first? Open season. Neil? You know, I, I wanted to ask Lloyd and Mike, because it sounds like they did amazing things with their first layout. But if I were to start again, I would definitely start small. I mean, maybe 18 inches by four or six feet long, something just to get my feet wet, get the whole thing done, understand little things like laying track, getting my rail joiners tight, um, slipping in the sleepers underneath where you had to take them out, how to ballast, how to set up room and think ahead for your structures, right? It, just something small. You can always incorporate it in a future layout, but honestly, something that small, you can just wipe it clean and start again. I mean, unless you have a support group like Mike and Lloyd do, I don't see, uh, like me, I've been a lone wolf mobler all my life, right? So, I mean, I don't see any other way to learn it than do it. Just sit down and do something small. I mean, you can see behind me, I've experimented and played with all different scales. And you got to find out what it is you like about this hobby. Lloyd? I could, I could go, go next. Ahead. Go ahead, Lloyd. Um, um, being new to this hobby, um, a lot of people had trains when they were small. I had my first train when I was 58. Uh, never been on a train, never, well, I can't say never seen a train, but the train was very far from my mind. Um, so what I would suggest um, as a newbie into this hobby is do a lot of research. Uh, there's so much stuff out there. There's uh, forums, uh, YouTube, Facebook, um, the people or clubs. I mean, there's so much, yeah, there's lots of information. But All I right. think that the most important thing <laughs> is for, anyway, for me was budget. If you know what your budget is, what your space is, uh, then you could decide if you're going to go N scale or HO or O scale. Um, so there's a lot of questions you got to ask yourself before you get started. Uh, I think that's the important thing. Neil, to, to come back to your question and, and where you were addressing that, um, I was very fortunate in that before I started my own layout at home, I was a member of four different model railroading clubs through the years. And through those individuals that I met in those clubs and then joining the NMRA, Gordy, uh, in, in, uh, 2012, it opened up an avenue for me that was, uh, unimaginable. Uh, I, uh, we had the 2016 convention here in Dallas, Fort Worth, and I was the chair for that, for a regional, for the Lone Star region. And Charlie Getz came and I presented Charlie with a, uh, application that I picked up back in the 1970s that still showed that I could get a lifetime membership for $125. And I presented that to him and asked him if he would go ahead and process that. And he just kind of giggled and walked away. So <laughs> I had known about the NMRA for a long time, but never functionally joined. Um, 
I had a gentleman come up to me by the name of Larry Swigert at a train show in 2012, and he saw me operating some trains at a, at a, a train show, and he said, you really need to join this organization. I think it would do wonders, and I think you could probably help the organization. And it allowed me to make friends. It allowed me to, to go to layouts that I had only read about in magazines and operate on those, ma on those layouts. Uh, you know, whether it's Gil Freitag, Stony Creek and Western in Houston, or Steve Davis's um, Kansas City Third Division in, in Tulsa, or different layouts all around the country. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to learn from individuals. And one of the things that I always tell people, and, and the rest of you guys, I'm sure will agree with this, as a new person in the hobby, there is no reason that you need to make the same mistakes that the rest of us have. So learn from those people, ask those people that are around you and let them mentor you so that you don't make those mistakes and try to try to, as I mentioned, weather with a candle to get soot on the top of a locomotive and ruin it. So uh, there's no reason for that when you've got a resource at your fingertips that's uh, ready and available. Trust me, I've been on both ends of the spectrum. So that's, that's yep. the deal. I would never have tried, Neil, to answer your question. I would never have tried to build that layout of mine that I built that was the 15 by 19 first home layout if I hadn't have had years worth of other experiences to go with it. So that's true. But but again, you, you have to get your hands dirty, right? You got to get in there and do it. No doubt about Otherwise, it. Otherwise, you just can't read about it. You can't watch YouTube. You just just do it. It's, you, you can't break anything. I mean, really, it's hard to break something that's not it's not a big deal. I do I do scenery clinics all around the country all the time. And one of the things I tell everybody is the mystique of doing scenery clinics. Everybody goes, well, I can't do scenery. I can't do scenery. Yes, you can. And if you mess it up, take it out and start all over again. There's no big issue there. You know? Right. Okay. Okay, okay. We're going to go to Perry. So Perry can answer the question. <laughs> yeah, I, I would tend to agree with Neil. If you're going to do something, start small. Um, our division is about to start, next Saturday is going to start its next training camp series. And the series is going to be building a module and getting all those steps for, for what you need for a model railroad in on two by four feet. And for somebody who would be just starting with the model railroad, just to get your feet wet and learn the skills that you need, that would be perfect. The other big thing that I would suggest to people when they start, if they're starting on a model railroad is, please try not to cram everything that you can find online into one model railroad. You'll end up with something that is so crowded confused and may or may not work very well, um, spend a ton of money and not be very happy with it. So if you can start small and not stuff everything into your railroad, you'll be much better off. That's great. So yeah. <clears throat> the, the final thing, final thought from Gordy on this, okay, is that um, you don't necessarily need to start building a layout with baseboards to start building your first layout because you can start building rolling stock structures weathering things and learning all the skills and putting them to one side so that when you have that dream layout when you do that move you've got the stuff available having been someone who's been planning a move to a tiny little island for two and a half years i can tell you that um now as of yesterday starting to put the layout into here i have stuff that that you know, within 12 hours of, of starting yesterday, we had a track down and uh, we were doing wiring. We were until the server blew up. So, um, you know, we would have had an operable layout tonight. So if you can, you know, there's nothing to stop you um, building those component parts before you, you put the layout together. That's how they build airplanes. That's how they build cars. So in some places, that's how they build houses. I think it's important to, to, to point out that there's no right and wrong way. If you want to build it out of a piece of foam or a piece of plywood or, a, or whatever, give it a try. You could do it on foam core, right? There's no right and wrong way. I mean, now I'm experimenting with spline roadbed. I've never done that before. And so every layout I'm doing has some new aspect to it. And 
you're not going to be good at it until you try it, right? Uh, yep. And you're never going to be an expert at it. Andy, you're never going to be brilliant. I saw your post. Because it's like when you lose something, you're going to look for something until you find it. Who would keep looking after you found it? You know, they always say it's in the last place you look. But honestly, you're going to build it until you're satisfied with it. And then you're going to stop. That's all the further you're going to go. Yeah. Just, so so we're going to go we're going to go somewhere because you've just hit on a topic and I just want to go down that route a little bit before we come back on track. So uh three of the guys here are very much near uh, metropolitan areas um have a large group of modelers a large presence of the NMRA active in their area um potentially more than me and Neil do. So this is really a question for you Neil. Where did you um because Where's your support network for your modeling? If you well, have a you question, know, it sounds like a blatant a plug for no, and it sounds like a blatant plug for the NMRA. But um, in the beginning, it was model rotor and joining the NMRA when I was probably 13 years old as a junior member, and then traveling from where I lived in Northwest Washington down to Seattle to King Street Station and seeing those layouts. Uh, I had to beg my parents to go with me, you know. But just to see other people's work and reading about it in the magazine, I was too shy to write anybody or heaven knows we had didn't have anything like this back then, right? But you know, even even learning and reaching out. And years later, I found out that the surgeon for the local hospital, Nicholas Muff, was building a giant oh, Kansas Nick City Muff. railroad in his basement. And you did it, you could view it through his F what seven locomotive cab. Who would have known? And now, of course, I'm 2,500 miles away and uh, no opportunity to do that. But, you know, you just you just keep learning in the way that was available to you at the time. We have so many more avenues now to reach out and help one another. Um, lately, Model Railroading Live uh, on Werribee like this has allowed me to have a community of people like you, Gordy, and others. Um, Lloyd's frequently on there. And so it's been a real way to, to get bounce ideas off of people and learn from their experience. Or Neil, it's amazing. Mark. Nick, it's so, like six degrees Mike. away from Nick Muff. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, we're going to go down to Lloyd. Um, to answer that question is, uh, for example, myself, I live what we call in the boondocks. There's nobody around me that does any model railroading. Um, so if I want to go to see some layouts, I got to drive an hour to go to Montreal or an hour to go to Ottawa. And so I spend hours and hours, if not days and weeks and months, <laughs> just searching the internet. And for me, the internet really is what saved me. And that's how I found out about NMRA, which is in Ottawa, which I drive an hour to go there. But I mean, in immediate area, I'm all by myself, but I'm starting to find people that are willing to drive an hour to come over. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I know from, so, so I live in Orkney where there, there are no railroads, and uh, the nearest railroad to us is on the mainland, and and there's four trains a day. That's it that run down to Inverness, um, and so model railroading as a hobby tends to tends to come from people who see trains in real life and want to mimic it themselves um there are no trains here however there are model railroaders um there are quite a lot of model railroaders actually in orkney in fact there's one in my village and and so um oh. the, and one that i met on the boat <laughs> who happened to babysit my partner when she was younger so and she didn't remember that they were a model railroader so uh, and i know through nmrex that uh, christina the marketing consultant found out that her neighbor who i think is three doors down has a model railroad in their basement through uh, sharing one of our nmrex um, uh, feeds which if everybody that's on youtube right now just wants to share the feed to their facebook or twitter or everywhere on social media that would be lovely and you might find a model railroad just down the street um but you know there, there are many many people around even if you feel like you don't know anyone if you join the nmra or join your local model railroad road, railroad club you'll open that that door and there's mm -hmm. like neil said the the internet's uh the internet's a, gr a great thing um okay so my final question we were going to go to was how did the NMRA help you to learn the skills required, the skills you required and encourage you to complete your fish layout? We're not going to do that because we've well covered the NMRA there. You all got the brief. So, um, but no, seriously, I, I didn't prime anyone. What we're going to do 
is we're going to scoot over to the Facebook uh, group of the NMRA. And if you're not already a member, you should really think about joining if you've got a Facebook account because there is a community of over 22,000 model railroaders from around the world. And if you want a wealth of ideas and you want to see people doing their first layout to doing their masterpiece before they never build another layout again, let's just leave it at that, um, then you, you can see both ends of the spectrum. So it's a fantastic group and there's manufacturers in there and vendors and you'll, you'll get to meet some great mm -hmm. people. So we're going to try not to kill Gordy's computer. If this dies, I apologize, but I'm going to share Facebook. That looks like not Facebook. Where's Facebook? Why can't I see Facebook? Well, Gordy's doing that. Why don't we go around the room and, and tell people what our model uh, railroad is and if there's a Facebook site or a blog site that you use. Great idea. I am actually sharing now though. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I've managed to get it to work. Okay, so um, this is our NMRA Facebook group. You're all seeing lovely Facebook there. Um, and we're going to put a post on that's going to look like this every day. Okay, so today's theme was your first layout. So we asked people to share photos and videos of their first layout or train set. Now, for some people, this was going back quite a way. And I have to say before we get there that Andy, we'll say your surname in a minute, but Andy, I'm super impressed you've got photographs from this far back. I, I, I didn't think that, you know, someone would still have a photograph that far back, but you did. So that's great. So um, Brad, Brad Anderson of uh, NMRAX Parish in Australia, who's currently camping with his family. That's why he's not here today. Um, he has uh, shared a video of his first layout, which you'll have seen in the background of uh, NMRAX uh, uh, sessions in the past. He has um, built his layout. He's, he's going to be a multi-deck layout there. He's got track down on level one but he's been sidetracked by setting up remote operations. And uh, if you see up there on this little picture, there's a camera. So I guess, guys, um, one thing we could say there is that um, no plan survives first contact. So um, <laughs> the uh, you, you can get sidetracked when you're building your first layout. It's a journey. It's, it's, a, it's a journey you have to go on. It's not a process you have to follow, right? Guys? Definitely. There's a lot of rabbit yeah. holes, yep. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Jeff, uh, Jeff shared a video there of his first layout, the Splitters Swamp Creek. Um, that's great. So everyone watch that video. Um, it looks like, yeah, Andy's even said there, Andy Ambrose from the UK has said uh, that looks like a pretty good standard of a, of a first, of a, for a first layout, and I can see that, but you don't know someone's first layout could be their only layout and they could have been working on it for 50 years you just don't know but that looks fantastic well done um there we have dan dan's in the process of building his first layout. dan um is there some kind of civil unrest there there's a there's a tank that's looking a bit worrying but uh that's looking great We've got some structures in there Um i see uh maybe using the tank as a bulldozer i don't know but that's 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 great Somebody says they think they're keeping Gordy up. Yeah. Does it feel like it? No, it's not that way yet. Um, it was the beer. Yeah. It was the beer. Oh, no. After today, Gordy needs a beer. Um, so, wow. And if, this is a photograph I was telling you about, guys. This is Andy's dad's layout from the 50s. How did he build it in black and white like that? I don't know. <laughs> Andy, how did you build it in black and white? I mean, that's what I've been wondering all day. But some hey, of those are those those are the way that the scenery material was back then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that that was gonna, a lot of weathering. I was going to say. I mean, who thought they were weathering in the 1950s? But look at that. And and you know, Mike, there was no issues there with. Uh, there was definitely no issues there with the whole uh, soot. Look at that. No, not a bit. No, I was thinking about that. That that would have that would have survived my technique. <laughs> <laughs> um and then there's Patrick's layout. Um his first American layout anyway. <laughs> some interesting use of background scenery. Looks like you tried a technique there to do some depth of scene, which is which is great. That looks like quite a narrow little switching layout. We talked about um you know, different types of first layout. Switching layout was one that I think came up earlier. Um 
mark there is well in progress with his first layout that's looking great and you can see that the scenery is starting to come but key important thing that i just want to touch on that i have spotted from here okay and that is that these first layouts have all got tracked down so one thing one piece of advice that click the photo and open it larger okay yes that's a good point Gordy will try that and you you will see what happens to Gordy's computer. Here we go. We are streaming. He was colorblind anyway, so. Uh, well, I'll join the cup. There you go. Bigger picture. So one of the key things here that I've noticed, and this would be my one and only tip for someone who's building their first layout, is the first thing you should do once you've built the baseboards is put the track down and wire it up. Don't yep. ballast. Don't do anything like that. Put the track down and wire it up and run a train. Even if you've only put the main line down and you've put the turnouts in, but you've not put any track off the turnouts. Running a train as quickly as possible is what will maintain your interest. Because even if something doesn't go right, you get frustrated with something, something starts taking a long time, you can always just go to the layout, run a train and let your imagination see the scene and give you a bit more inspiration and motivation. Okay. Guys, we agree with that or yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I think so too. I definitely think so. Okay. I mean, that's the cool. point of routine is is for things to uh, the point of motor routing is to get your engines to run. It's an animated event and, and it, at some point you're gonna want to get beyond watching it run around and chase its tail. So that's only good for so long. And once you learn how to operate a train more prototypically, what they do for a living, I think you're gonna find there's a whole nother world to model trains, to model railroading. Absolutely. Okay, Terry, I don't have a date on this, but you, you, I don't think you're looking at that. That's maybe 1960s. I don't think you've won the award for the oldest photograph here, um, just for the fact that that doesn't quite look O-gauge, so it's probably a little bit later than the original picture. But, but... but I want to point out something on this one, Gordy, mm -hmm. okay? He came properly dressed with the respect for model railroading. Look at those shoes. I mean, I I'm telling you, he's he came he came prepared. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's um there's a good bit of bullying, as we would say in the British military. There's a bit of bullying gone on those shoes for definite. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah I think he's got good. a Sunday going to meet and closing there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely uh definitely a good photo. Oh, was there a date there at the top? Did yeah, Gordy miss that? 1960. Oh, well, look at that, Gordy. You're a genius, right? Look at that, 1960. So I wasn't far off. Right, here we go. Proof that there was color phot photography in uh, Montreal in the set in the late 70s. So I saw these pictures earlier. This was Greg. Fantastic. Look at that. So, yep, yeah, and mm -hmm. we got the track down and we got the trains running. That's great. But, Greg, did we ever get past that? That's what I want to know. Did we ever Did we ever manage to get past that that bit there? Did you ever get any more scenery done, or did you just decide you were, you were a wee nipper and you just decided to run trains? Because I don't think my first layout got far from that <laughs> when I was a wee in. Um, okay, I think we... I clearly have issues with my computer today. I apologize, guys. I'm struggling to scroll. Uh, there we go. Okay, Pam, uh, NMRA Facebook manager here, has put on um, a picture of her dad's layout. This is her, it's the first layout she can remember, so we'll call this her first layout. Yep, look at that. Oh, We've got oh, we got to note there's the uh, UP camera, UP camera, UP calendar there in the top right corner, and look at those yep. curtains. I mean, straight out the sound of music, absolutely <laughs> awesome, right? <laughs> Fantastic points for that. I don't know what you what you can convert those points for, but <laughs> points don't necessarily mean prizes here, okay? Uh, oh dear. Oh, gone way too far. There's the wheel of sandpaper. Okay. I think that was the end of it. That was the end of our, our stuff. So that's great. Stop sharing. Back to that. So some great stuff there. So people, 
you put your content, you'll see that post go out again tomorrow morning when I'm at work uh, before you guys are awake. So in the middle of the night in the east coast of the United States, that post will go out. Pop some photograph comments in there. I think tomorrow it's locomotives and rolling stock. It's a great opportunity to show what you're doing. It's a great opportunity to drive the conversation and get yourselves involved in NMRX. So, um, but some some great stuff there that we got to talk about. So, from that, actually, Gordy, yeah. Gordy, in the states that locomotives and rolling stock is on Tuesday. Oh. Okay. You're ahead of us a little bit. I'm yeah. way ahead of you. What are we doing tomorrow? <laughs> Structures and scenery tomorrow. There you go, buddy. There you go. Oh, dear me. It's been a long day. It's been a very long day. Okay, cool. Um, so we've still got about 10 minutes to go. Let me see if uh, Mr. Speed has sent me any questions. But um, so, do, 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 do. right, Speed, send me the questions as you get them. Um, when he's got them. So Speed will send me some of your questions. Um, I have, a, I have a question for the other guys, though. I, I'm on, curious yeah. what tools they use to design a layout. Uh, what do you do? Are you pencil and paper, or do you use a computer? I use somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I I found a track plan in Model Railroader magazine. Uh, one of our one of one of the NMRA's MMRs um, published his track plan in Model Railroader, and it arrived. Um, two weeks after I got my basement train room finished. Perfect. Uh, this is what I'm putting in my, in this, this is the schematic of what I'm putting into my, in, into my basement. I've, I've got a question for you guys though. Um, you've all been doing this for a while. Um, okay. I just lost my train of thought. Okay. Next. <laughs> no I, know, I, I know what you're thinking because I often, Often wonder what what uh, drives people to choose an era or a prototype, right? Because a lot of us do things based on our memories. But I mean, like my ON30 railway, you know, I wasn't around when there was any steam. I've I've sort of sought it out, but um, that's what's become fascinating to me, and I've never actually seen it in real life. So how do people decide what railroad that interests you, and then from there, do you design a layout around it, or do you use a pre-manufactured, you know, published layout, Mike? I, I'll uh, jump on that one. Um, I actually work for the, the Cotton Belt Southern Pacific and the uh, the late 70s, early 80s. And I started out modeling that time frame because I worked there, I lived it, I saw it every day, and it became very easy for me to recall what I saw and work work with that. And that's what I modeled. I have found myself over the last few years to start to roll back my time frame because I've gotten more interested in steam like you, Neil, and now I'm modeling the diesel to steam transition era and uh, in doing first generation diesels uh, and and late steam. So that's what that's the reason I chose what I did. Boyd? Um, not knowing anything about trains, uh, like I said, I spent so much time on the internet and I was born in the 50s, so 70s, and I've heard that uh, the transition era, uh, mm -hmm. like, for example, CP went from Burgundy Grey to the Pac-Man, so it, I'm able to get both of them at the same time. And basically, it, it, everything was internet, and I did a lot of research, and that's where I found what I wanted to do, and when I met the um the track planner uh i told him i go i want a passenger train uh running non-stop and i want my freights and i want a double main line and these are all things that i saw uh when i was doing my research of what i really wanted so but all the rest though is i mean it's all you guys uh the information that i was able to find yeah okay you, so you, i don't like, want to i don't want to Jump. Let's not jump too far down the layout design discussion because Wednesday is LD Sig Day and yep. also Op Sig Day. So let's not jump down there. Other than Gordy to give a plug that Gordy's given a clinic on how he designed his layout, and my layout I model the Wisconsin. I model Wisconsin, not the Wisconsin. I model Wisconsin um, in southern Wisconsin 
on the old Wisconsin Central and what's now the part of the, well, old Milwaukee, now part of the Wisconsin, it's now the Wisconsin Southern Railroad. So I modeled two railroads. It's two separate layouts. You could model yourself. One's completely modular, but it's triple deck modular layout. And the wow. other one's a fixed layout. There's a switching layout that fits in a, a 10 foot by 10 foot space with six foot by six foot square chopped off the 10 foot by 10 foot area. So it's quite a tight space, four decks, end scale. You'll see that track point on Wednesday. I've got a clinic on it followed by a round table. So let's not go down that route too far. But well, one I thing I did... Ask, Gordy, but... I, I do want to ask because it, you can get frustrated trying to build a layout that you see getting toward completion in five years. I mean, that just seems yeah. like a lifetime to a lot of people who want to see trains up and running. And uh, maybe oh, yeah. you're going to touch on the Toma ideas. I don't know. Well, I was just going to touch on... You feel like you've ever on... bit off more than you can chew? I'm sure all of us have. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I'm... So I'm in the UK, so we build a lot of small layouts um, because of space constraints. I mean, mm -hmm. very, very constricted on space. I, I'm not now a living Orkney, and I built a house that's got a custom train room. I'm probably one of the few people in the NMRA British region that has that and hasn't had to go outside to put an outbuilding in or hasn't had to convert a space in the house, okay? I'm very, very fortunate. Most people in the States have big basements. You've got plenty of room to build something. I would say the first layout you should build shouldn't be something that's going to over going to phase you exactly. and you're going to think oh my god what have i done but also i think it's important to to have a go at some of the modular standards as a first layout whether that's even the first thing that you do is a t-track module that's 12 or, foot basically or, 12 at inch least, square. or at least build your first layout with an eye towards expansion absolutely yeah you could do um, that but the key thing is, if you're not, if you're not dead set on era, now you, I'm I'm talking to someone here who's got hit all scales, because simply it was easy to build a layout in a different scale and go and experiment, just like Neil. But I, you know, I've got O scale two rail because that's what my father did, but it's British. But I've got American two two rail O scale. What I discovered there was that the loading gauge doesn't doesn't cope well with British signaling and and British uh, loading gauge very well. S scale now, <laughs> um, yeah. So. S scale now, yeah. Um, I've got N scale, and I've got three different eras of HO scale stuff, all all just enough to operate a small switching layout. But it, it, my thing is experiment on what works for you, because you'll find the niches within the hobby that interest you, and you can focus on those niches. Nobody, even none of the MMRs, even, and I'm going to get shot for saying what I'm about to say, is an expert in every facet of the hobby. Absolutely, okay. I agree yep. with that. No one is. So everybody has their own little niche and ends up becoming their own specialist thing that they go down. Okay. Like for Neil, it's dead rail and the railroads of Hawaii, which is pretty niche. Okay. For Gordy, it, I don't really know what my niche is right now other than doing daft things like this at silly o'clock at night. But other people have their own niche. And, and if you're just starting off in the hobby, then you're going to feel like there's an overwhelming amount of stuff to do. And you shouldn't go comparing yourself to the people that you see in the magazines. That's an aspiration to get to. Yep. So, and Gordon, to if, do is to if do you it. hear an MMR tell you they are the expert in everything, run. <laughs> run very yes. fast and far away. So, okay. So, so let me give you one example of, of the things that I've done. And I've done – so I have my civil AP certificate. I think I've got three more AP certificates to do before I could submit for my MMR. Um, I'm in the difficult ones now that make it difficult being on an island. But anyway, we'll get there eventually. So I've done laying, hand laying track. I'm going to use this as an example. I've hand laid track with tie plates, spikes, you name it, I've done it. My layout that I'm building at the moment downstairs, the end scale layout, is being laid in Cato Unitrack, which most people start with. But there's two reasons why I'm doing that, and that's through learning and experiment and experience and experimentation. One main reason we're doing that is because, yeah, I've got it, Speed. One one reason that we're doing that is because um, Cattle Uni Track's bulletproof. Yep. Second reason that we're doing that is currently it's the only track available and I want a layout. But the third bigger reason that I'm doing that is because my layout's designed for remote operations. So I'm going to have everybody remotely operate my layout. Now, We'll know through the quality of this stream and through webcams. Webcams are not going to show up tie plates and spike heads in end scale. Not a cat in hell's chance of that happening. Yep. In fact, you're not going to be able to tell that it's Unitrack once it's weathered. 
So you've got to, so when you're doing your first layout, there's nothing you're going to do wrong. You're going to make mistakes, but that's not a failure. That's just the first attempt in learning. So you're just going to learn and you're going to notch that down to experience. And then the next time, what are you going to do? And that little segue leads me right on to the next question, okay, which is from the YouTube feed, which is what made you decide to break up that first layout and move on to the next one? To the second layout who wants to take that first uh i like i said my my first layout lasted about three months three four months because of mistakes and i thought that op, like i said i didn't know much about um, this hobby so i thought that operations were to go from point a to point b and come back downstairs the next day and go from point b to point a and just move the cars back and forth. That's what I thought operations were. And when um, the guy that designed my layout that I have now asked me, what are you gonna do the next day? I said, well, I'm gonna take from A and go to B. And I, he goes, how long are you gonna be able to do that without getting bored? Uh, yeah, you're right. So he was able to like, when he asked me, do you want operations? I said, yes. So now I'm into operations and I've got 18 industries on my layout. So it'll keep people very busy. Yeah. No, I think that's a great, I think that's a really good point, Lloyd, because um, every NHL game starts off with the same number of players. Okay. Everyone between the Maple Leafs and the, and the Bruins ends the same way with a Leaf defeat. But um, <laughs> every single every single game of sport that's played starts with the same figures, and every single one is different. And that's how your model railroad should be every time you walk up to it. If yeah. it's the same all the time, people won't be you. <laughs> you'll lose interest in it. Okay. You know, it's like washing the dishes. Honestly, all right. <laughs> you yep. wouldn't, you know, it's a chore, and you don't want your hobby to become a chore. So, who wants to go next with the ripping it down, Mike? Well, I wanted to come back to one thing. I know we're bumping up against the clock here, Gordy, but Neil brought up something a minute ago, and you echoed that you wanted to do it. Uh, a, a a list of places if we've got a Facebook page for our railroads or something like that that you wanted to list. Do you still want to do that? Yeah, or or yes. post it post it in the in the NMRAX um, yeah. bit for today. Yeah, if okay. I can do that. Take great. time. All of my all of my take me down layouts of all layouts have all been because I've moved. But I'm in this house, and since it's just me and there's nobody to tell me I'm going to move someplace else, this one will get finished. I think your layout's pretty finished. You're like, <laughs> I've seen your yeah, layout. Yeah. But there's it, always it, something more you can do. Yeah, I've got a couple more towns to build, and I've got some hand laid track to to install. But but the the definition of finished is is very uh, is very across the board. I know a guy that's got all eleven certificates and an MMR, and the name of his layout is the Never Done Layout. Okay, because nope. because it, it's never done. <laughs> That's why my five five years to go. It's not really true. <laughs> yeah, you know, I have to put I, it I in before the end. Question, of so, so, yeah, so, yeah, question. so, so, hang, hang on, Neil, hang on. We're just going to go back to Lloyd's point. So, what you're saying is that your quest for finishing your layout could be like the Toronto Maple Leafs quest for winning the Stanley Cup, right? <laughs> Well, uh, I can tell you it's not going to take over 50 years. That's for sure. There's a history here, I think. I think there's history was, here. No, no, not between yeah. me and Lloyd, but there is between other people that we're watching this. Yeah. And, and, and the key thing there is that 2020 was going to be their year. I don't know. But, don't but know. we'll move on. We'll move on to Neil. Neil, go on. I think every time I've broken down a layout to start again is because – as I build layouts, I learn more and more about what it is I like about model railroading. And I think it becomes more and more refined. And lately, I'm going back to my roots. My, my, uh, my background is building model structures for architects, and eventually it led me into the profession. So now I feel really comfortable building structures, and yet I still love it. So that's something I really love to do. I, I can't 
get away from model trains because that's sort of the ground that everything is built off of. And so I love that part of it. But every time I've broken down one, it's because I've learned something about what I'm doing that isn't going to be satisfied. I can't scratch that itch. And for example, the last layout I realized, I started researching buildings and then doing um, photo match and sketch up to create replicas of those, but they seemed out of place on the layout. So now I'm doing something that's more prototypically based and it's gonna be representative of actual places using the same tools I've learned in the past. So it's as you learn and you move forward, you're gonna learn things that you like and don't like. Do you like laying yep. track? Do you like putting <laughs> your tie plates? Do you like building structures? Do you like weathering cars? Do you like building cars and structures? To me, if I buy something that costs more but takes a long time to build, that's good value for me. So I, I've learned that's something that I like about the hobby. That's awesome. That's a great place to stop. So we're going we're gonna to stop. Um, all I'm going to say is that if you're an NMRA member and you go to the NMRA website, there's something called the layout directory. Okay, it used to be called the Pike Registry, if you're familiar with the older terms. Like we used to, we used to have a logo that was shaped like a wheel, and now we have a logo that's shaped like a wheel. We'll move on. So, um, the, the it's still shaped like a wheel. So, um, you can go there and you'll find layouts um, there that people that are members that are willing to to host people to go and look at their layouts, and and you'll find that they'll talk about their layouts and they'll show you things and and explain things and you know obviously of course we've got to plug the NMRA Facebook group twenty two thousand members uh, in there of that Facebook group not all necessarily NMRA members but they're from all over the world. Um, you ask a question in that group and you'll generally get an answer from yep. from twenty different sides, but uh, you'll you'll get the answer that's the best that people have. So. What we're just going to do now is we're going to kind of wrap this for today. We'll be back with another roundtable tomorrow with a different panel. It's going to be, what is it going to be, Mike? Uh, tomorrow is, uh, uh, I, I know Tuesday. That's when I'm coming back. I don't know tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, is, uh, tomorrow is structures and scenery. Um, okay. And then we yeah. have uh, locomotives. Neil's coming Rollins back for Tuesday. that one, right, Neil? <laughs> uh, I'm there tomorrow. I'm there tomorrow yeah. at 6. Why is so we'll have different I people have a every day. I job there, Mike. <laughs> so do I. I'm working in the morning. Um, so we have different people every day. We'll do these up until Friday. On Saturday, we're not doing one because we have our banquet, our virtual banquet. I'm expecting people to post lots of pictures with them uh, watching NMRX with their family at the dinner table. But we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Our breakfast table if you're in Australia. Uh, but we're going to go now because we need to do an NMRX shift change uh, and a handover. So, Martin, are you going to throw us over? to the, to the holding.